I'm with George Glazier from Western Uranium and Vanadium. It's so good to see you. How are you? Good to see you, Tracy, always. <laughs> so let's talk. I am so excited about this interview, everybody, at Investor Intel Land, because this is a real expert on the market. What's going on in the uranium market this year? Is it going to continue to escalate? Well, that's what you know. everybody is projecting. You take a look at the supply demand, and it's really going to be positive for the demand. You know, it's, it's demand's going up, but production is not. You know, everybody that covers this thing says it's just a matter of time. And when the breakout comes, you know, we've got a spot market just maybe in the low 50s now. But the breakout could come any time this year and it could skyrocket. Uh, it hasn't happened, but we're waiting for that. And once the utilities talking to, you know, the knowledgeable people in the industry, once the utilities realize the shortages, they're all going to panic and start buying. They don't have any choice. They need the uranium. And of course, what's gone on since the war in Ukraine, the, the big question for a lot of the, you know, the U.S. utilities as well as Western utilities, European utilities, should they be buying Russian uranium? The U.S. gets 50% of the uranium from the Russians. Are we going to keep doing that? So I'm just not going to happen quickly, but there is going to be some sanctions, if not some reluctance to buy from the Russians. So that drives the demand for Western uranium, Australia, Canadian, U.S., it drives the demand up probably far beyond what we can produce initially, but eventually we can gear up and produce it, but you've got to have higher prices, <laughs> and that's coming. Well, we've talked about sustainability a lot over the years, you and I have, and the bottom line is that we do all have an advantage when we have a sustainable supply chain in North America. And of course, as you mentioned, the Russians, I think the numbers actually, in my personal opinion, may actually be worse in how much we are actually reliant on the Russians when you take into account all the Russian partners. Because it's one thing to have sanctions against the Russian partners, it's another one to have sanctions against their best friends. And people don't really like to talk about that. Um, but on that note, you're in the US, and of course, you've had a lot of good news. Let's talk about your Utah processing plant. What's the timeline and how is that going right now? Yeah, that processing plant is going well. We're, we, of course, acquired the site, announced that we have had the engineering going on now, and the permitting process is going on. Uh, we should be in a position to submit our application for the major licenses uh, late this year and have the permits so we can start construction uh, in 25, early 25, build out by early 26, production in 26. You're, George Glazier is one of the most difficult people in the world to get a hold of because you're always on the property. That's right. I actually, I actually live, I'm one of the CEOs that lives 20 miles from our, our production plant, a little bit farther you know, from our mine. But you know, again, I'm there all the time and I'm running the operations. We've got operation guys, but you know, this is the key to being there. So because it's so hard to get a hold of you because you're always on the project, always working, can you tell our audience why Western Uranium and Vanadium is one of the competitive uranium and critical mineral companies with the Vanadium that companies or investors should take a look at and what you deem to be some of the top competitive advantages. Well, our top competitive advantage is the Sunday Mine Complex, which is, the you know, in the world, there's no doubt about it, it's the best uranium-vanadium mine in a combination of two minerals in a mine, high-grade both minerals. There just aren't any of those in the world. The few of them that occur in Colorado and Utah, and you know, we have the highest grade, you know, there's no doubt about it. Uh, you know, we can compare it to the others. There's others out there, but ours just happened, and it's fully developed. You know, we don't have, you know, a hundred million dollars of capital to spend. We, we're in the mine, mining and developing underground right now. So that's the key asset that basically cash flows this company when that process plant is operational. So how about a flourish on vanadium? What's happening in the vanadium market? Well, vanadium, we went to the Mines and Money Conference just a week ago in Miami, and vanadium was far higher interest than uranium because the battery demand for vanadium is skyrocketing and they just can't find it. You know, we talked to the big ones like Largo. The Chinese are the biggest vanadium producer, but they don't export any. They're building these redux batteries right and left. 
and all these companies, you take a look, Sumitomo's announced they want to be in the U.S. You know, V-Flow battery, they all want it, but none of them have vanadium. Where are they going to get the vanadium? In a vanadium battery, you can't build it without vanadium. So vanadium is going to be a hot commodity, maybe even hotter than uranium. You know, that's what the projections are if you talk to these guys that basically say, we got to have it. Uh, we have it and we're willing, you know, at, at some point to contract to sell it. We don't have any contracts for uranium and vanadium right now, so we haven't hedged it. We're waiting for the right time to do that. Well, we're here, PDAC 2023. George, please don't be a stranger. We love getting updates from you. More and more. I will be available. I'll make it a point not to be at the mine so often. Okay, thank you. All right.